Okay, you guys, I'm doing it. <laughs> I am getting on here and laying out our entire school year for next year because I know that the school year is upon us and I don't want to make a video too late for any of you to maybe glean some ideas or some books that you wanna to add to your list for the next school year. So I'm hopping on here and pretty much letting you know everything we are hoping to do this year, planning to do this year. This is what's on paper, but you know how that goes. Just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean it works in real life. So there's always that first few weeks where you get a feel for how the flow is, how much stuff I'm planning, and sometimes I can add, most of the time I take away. So hoping that this is, you know, I've learned through the years to plan just the right amount. Um, less is more in my homeschool philosophy. I would much rather the children have short, um, several subjects a day and just short so that they can actually retain what they hear and learn about it that day. And over the course of the school year, it just accumulates. And then the different subjects kind of intertwine. So if we're studying, I don't know, uh, I remember one year we were studying uh, about uh, Cromwell and, and we were also reading a literature book, a wonderful book, I would highly recommend it actually, called Children of the New Forest. And it was a great, great story, but throughout the story there was so much history. So about Cromwell and the Roundheads and everything that was going on in England at that time. So those are the things that I, I love about homeschooling is that it's not just this is history, this is science, this is um, music, you know, everything kind of interweaves with each other and so it's it's fun and re what is the word it solidifies what you've learned because not only did you see it on the map and hear it in the story but you read it in the historical um timeline card and you watched a documentary about it and you heard a piece of music that was composed during that era and saw a piece of art that was painted in that era and everything just like makes sense together and it's this big beautiful picture so i love that aspect of homeschooling our homeschooling is very much reading based we love living books kind of like the example i just gave you of that literature book but it ended up being a great historical book as well and geography book as well and character building book as well so there's so much that it's not just one isolated subject you know so my favorite subjects of course are those kinds of subjects the the enrichment stuff history music art nature those are my favorites and then of course we have to do <laughs> math which is fine but it's definitely not like what I wake up excited about every day and then we also do cursive and we also do Bible of course which isn't really part of school it's part of life I wanted to share with you exactly what we're doing this year I am trying a couple of things that are new and I'm kind of going back to my old our roots in school um, in the way that we did homeschooling we kind of tapered off these last two years trying to see um, if some new things would work for us and also I think with the move and with um, my children being older and reading on their own I kind of unintentionally stopped reading to them as much we definitely still read but not like we used to so this year I'm kind of reclaiming that uh, the way that we used to do our schooling. We've always gotten up, read Bible at breakfast, which we plan on doing this year. For Bible this year, through the whole 36 week year, we plan on reading through Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First Kings, Ecclesiastes, and Matthew. And I always try to do the Ambleside Bible schedule, but I always get off of it because I get excited about the stuff I'm reading on my own and I want to share the kids. And then we always read Proverbs. We always have ever since they were little. So it's hard to stick to that, especially since it's not just 
a subject it's like our life so if i see something in first and second thessalonians that i really want the kids to see or read i'm gonna do that for that day and then i get off schedule and i feel like forget it we'll just do our own thing so bible's always held loosely if we're gonna follow that schedule or not um for copy work this year i'm gonna do a variety of things i have these little um this curriculum called phonetic zoo which i'm not doing this year um if you want a really really easy spelling curriculum this is a good one it gives you a, a weekly spelling list and it's good but it didn't work for us but they, they it comes with all these little jingle cards that are like clues on how to remember the rules for spelling and so the open o as in the banjo dances yada 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 these kinds of little cards these jingles i'm gonna do these for copy work i'm also gonna do dictation of course for copy work quotes for copy work and every week they'll give me they give me oral narration every day for whatever they read but once a week i will have them i will write down their narration as they give it to me and then they will do that as copy work once a week so i'm gonna try that this year i admit copy work from the very beginning has been my least favorite subject to enforce because if you have boys and you homeschool you know that that is not their favorite thing but now that they're older it's much easier to enforce because they realize they got to do it and they want to get better at spelling and that's the way to get better at spelling i know that the theory with charlotte mason is reading is the way to get better good at spelling but i'm sorry I'm a great speller and I never read until I became a mother. So I don't know. And then I know a ton of homeschool diligent readers that don't spell well at all. So I kind of feel like spelling is one of those things you're either born with or you're not. And you have to practice it to get good at it. So I'm hoping that copy work every day will continue to make progress for them in spelling. They've already made great progress the last three years. And so that's my focus. Are they doing better? Then we're great. It's not about where should they be, it's are they progressing, right? Cursive I've done for the last four years and I only do it once a week. And I've been using this from Memoria Press. It's just Bible verses in cursive. Um, first it's all the letters, capital and lowercase, and then it starts to, um, write out uh, Bible verses and you can trace it and then do it freehand. It's just once a week. We did explode the code last year and we're not doing it again this year. I asked them if they wanted to do it again this year and they both said no. I'm considering doing daily grams for like just a worksheet kind of um, approach as well for just a little daily grammar lesson. I'm gonna check it out, possibly order it and do that but I may not. We also have our English lessons through literature that I've done in years past. And I feel like we have a great grammar foundation already because of these four years in a row of grammar with these. We may or may not do grammar this year. I don't think it's crucial to do it every year. Um, we'll probably touch on it again at least one more time in their education, but it's not something that I feel like we have to do every year. So. That's where I'm at with that. For math, we are doing Matthew C. We're sticking with it, I should say. We're sticking with Matthew C. We're starting the Zeta, and we're actually starting a new book at the beginning of the year this year, because we actually finished our book last year. So that's pretty cool. Most of the time we're finishing last year's book and then starting this halfway through the year. But this year we're starting and we're doing decimals and percents, which is technically behind for Ivan, but I don't care because he needed the extra time for the fractions. He's mastered them, he's good to go, and now we can move on. So that's the beauty of homeschooling. We are working with humans, individuals here, not forcing them to move forward whether they're ready or not but they're ready so I feel good with this as far as music and art go there are selected 
composers and selected artists and pieces of artwork and pieces of music that we will listen to once a week, um, kind of correlating with the time period. So we're doing Renaissance this year for history. So I always put up our timeline card up there. I actually was given these timeline cards many, many years ago. They're from Veritas Press and I'm using them again. This is our second time through Renaissance. So we've got, um, you know, Spanish Inquisition, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, the Reformation, which will be interesting to go through that where I'm at at this point in life. I think I'll give them a little extra information on Martin Luther that I've learned in the last few years. <laughs> um, in addition to what's on the timeline card. So every week we'll read one timeline card, post it up there, and make our way through, through the end of the year. If we finish the stack of timeline cards before the year's over, we just re go through them to just repeat them and learn them. So this year we're doing Columbus. Christopher Columbus, I love this book, I own it, so we're just gonna reread this. We also are going to check out at the library, Columbus and Sons. It's a very thick, it's the same, I think Foster is the last name, the same author that did um, George Washington's world and Abraham Lincoln's world and Caesar Augustus world. We've done all of those and we love them. But I don't know if I'm gonna go through the whole thing of Columbus and Sons. I've got to skim through it, but we're definitely gonna do this. And I was thinking we should do a unit study on his, um, his journey uh, for geography. And we're also doing a unit study on Contiki. That is, I, I've seen the movie and I remember being fascinated and researching it a ton, maybe five, six years ago. It was these group of guys, maybe in the 70s, maybe in the 60s, they built a raft that supposedly was exactly like the people that build those rafts. I can't remember who it was. And I think they like just sailed with the currents um, anticipating landing in the palette, something with a P, islands, and they were right. Like they, their assumption or their, their theory was right that Polynesian, Polynesian islands. Is that real? I think so. So anyway, that map, that journey, um, and the story, we're gonna do a unit study on that. Super interesting, I think they will love that. So we're doing that, and then I've gotta order audio of um, Story of the World. I thought it was in here. I think it's not. Story of the World, we've been doing those from the very beginning. I have to order volume three. I really thought I had all four volumes. Maybe not. Um, So, let's see where volume two ends. Yeah, we, we started to touch on Renaissance stuff in volume two towards the end of it, and now we're moving on to volume three. And we have the books, but we're gonna do audio for this. It's just easier to listen to them. And, in the car but this year i'm actually going to put a radio in the classroom and do one chapter a week of volume three story of the world that way we have access to our maps so we can look at the maps alongside listening to the history history and geography really are two subjects that go hand in hand together so that covers bible copywork cursive math music and art history geography science we're going for something new this year i ordered two 14 week long, like 14 lessons, uh, science curriculums from the good and the beautiful. And I've heard great things. They were really, really, really affordable. So even if we hate it, <laughs> at least it was very affordable. Last year we tried Apologia. It did not work for us. It was five days a week. I was like, we're not doing this. I'm sorry, that is not how we roll in our homeschool world. So we pretty much fell off the bandwagon well into like the first second week or something. It's just not the way we are. I try to do just once a week, but even that was too much. It just wasn't, it's just not our style. It's too textbooky 
So if you do that, awesome. But I am not a textbook teacher. I love living books and like fun stories that you can learn through. And so I'm really excited about the good and the beautiful. I've heard really good things. The boys chose, I put out all the different um, science topics or areas of study that were available for the science uh, packets and they chose space science and marine biology. So that's what we're doing. The first half will do space science, the second half will do marine biology. And I'm thinking I'm just gonna do two of those uh, um, through graduation because it, it's exactly the amount we would need if we start now to do two every year until we graduate and then we'll cover all of it. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then I told you grammar, I'm on the fence about whether or not we're gonna do um, daily grams and then I'm thinking we're gonna do Charlotte Mason ourselves it's called for citizenship and they say it's really good character building I've never ordered it all these years doing Charlotte Mason but I'm gonna check it out and see and we loved whatever happened to penny candy so we're gonna do the uncle uncle I forget the name but the book is called whatever happened to justice I ordered both ourselves and whatever happened to justice and we'll see how that goes and then as far as literature goes this is always our biggest area um, because I feel like we learn so much you know so I already showed you we're doing Columbus let me just get my stack here. and I think the only thing I'm missing is the case for Christ um, so 50 famous stories retold we read this year one of our homeschooling journey and i love it so very much i'm thinking i will read these again this year just revisit it because it's glorious i read i got this call it courage um they say it's a great character building book never read it this is another great character building book five secrets in a box short picture book easy just cuddle on the couch and read it one afternoon it's not part of like our curriculum it's just lots of fun books to read together the whipping boy heard good, great things the hundred dresses heard great things the trumpeter of cray cow heard great things <laughs> this will probably do just to touch on again we did an in-depth study on the underground railroad a few years ago I want to do it again um even though it has nothing to do with the renaissance era i just think it's good to have a few unit studies throughout the school year um i put this in the stack even though we've read this already we've completed home geography for, for primary grades i was thinking of skimming through it to see if i wanted to do anything repeat anything from in here but i'm not sure yet that's still in the air the family under the bridge short great story Pippo the Fool, short. William Shakespeare and the Globe, again, very short. Fun picture books, never never give up picture books, no matter how old your kids get. You open a picture book and your children end up all over you on the sofa and you can just sit there for hours together reading and learning and enjoying those cuddle times. I think they are priceless, probably my favorite thing about homeschooling is our reading time and then this is our big book the yearling we're reading this this year I also would like we're, we're almost done with um, um, my side of the mountain tri trilogy we're on the third one it's called we're on the third book of my side of the mountain it's called frightful's mountain we're almost done with that we're also almost done with the door in the wall and I would like to pick up where we left off with the Little House series. This will be the third time reading through the series in our whole homeschool journey together or before homeschool we were reading that. Um, I also really want to read Anna and the King to them. I think that's down here actually. Anna and the King. So I'm going to add this to our literature uh shelf so 
these are the books that I hope to get through this year. I think it's very doable because there's only two lengthy ones. The rest are all just, hey, today we're reading this and we'll just knock them out through the year quickly and easily. And um, the boys will always have a book reading that they're reading on their own. So I've got several to choose from here. Let me... Let me share a few with you. The Hittite Warrior. We read this last year together. Excellent. So some of these we've already read, but they wanted to keep them in case they wanted to read them again. This is extraordinary. We read this last year together. The Golden Goblet. Crispin and the Cross of Lead. This was excellent. The Wind in the Willows. Who doesn't love, love, love that? This is a must read. I adore this book. The boys love that. There's some Little House mixed in here. Um, the Cricket in Times Square. Easy read. Great story. Um, I've had this on the shelf for a while and I haven't read it yet. Little Men. It's the sequel to Little Women. I may or may not ever read it, but it's there in case we ever need a good book. We've also got... Some biographies. Davy Crockett. I think they've read this already, but it's still there. The Apple and the Arrow. Short, easy read. Great for bedtime reading for them individually. Canoe, canoeing with the Cree. This is new and I've not read it. I got it for them. So I'm hoping that they'll pick that up and read it sometime. I haven't read this recently. Numbering the Stars. It's about a little Jewish girl or number the stars. And during the Holocaust, I'm pretty sure he loved it. This no one's read yet. Harris and me. Heard good things. Uh, the Red Badge of Courage. No one's read this yet. And then Pilgrim's Progress, of course. Fantastic. Ivan read this last year. Holes. He loved it. And then Peter Pan we've read together. Treasure Island. The Rats of Nim. Absolutely amazing. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. The sequels are not as good. The first book is awesome. And then Adam of the Road. This is a great book. Great, great book. And then I'm going to take you to the other bookshelf for the other literature books they have to choose from for their personal reading. So I wouldn't necessarily read these out loud with them, even though I have read some of these already. These are the stacks or the shelves that they can choose their private reading for, their individual reading. And then um, all the other ones that I showed you, Anna and the King, the Yearling, and all of the picture books, I'll read to them. Together. And I realized I skipped something telling you guys about history. We're doing the timeline, we're doing Columbus, we're doing Story of the World audio, but we're also, as a family, going to repeat um, this country of ours. It's on YouTube as an audiobook. It's super, super long. We will not get through it this year, but we have committed to listening to some every week as a family for the next however many years until we get through the whole book together. And then of course I'm going to get, um, a lot of those picture books are Renaissance, um, uh, era based books. So that plus we watch documentaries, we watch videos, we cook food, we look at Renaissance art and hear Renaissance music, and the library will bring home a bunch of Renaissance books. So I don't really need to focus that much on the Renaissance, even though that's the time period. The timeline cards cover a lot of that. We've done an in-depth biography study on Leonardo da Vinci and Queen Elizabeth and Shakespeare, um, so we'll probably touch on that stuff. And I. I didn't see my Shakespeare book. I definitely plan on reading Shakespeare again to them. I think I left it in the living room. I will show you that. We'll do a Shakespearean story um, at least once a week. We'll read. So this is just the write out Bible, copy work, cursive, math, music and art, history, and then geography, science, literature, plus all the books I showed you, and then maybe grammar, ourselves, whatever happened to justice. 
And then these are all the books we're reading together out loud. And these are all the books they have to choose from to read individually. And we will listen to Story of the World on audio, as well as This Country of Ours on audio, and all of our timeline cards and math. And then these are their notebooks for cursive and copy work. And if we do the daily grams, their daily gram will go here as well. So the only thing that has not come in yet are the Good and the Beautiful Science Curriculums, Ourselves by Charlotte Mason, and Whatever Happened to Justice. Those things are on the way. Still on the fence about the grammar. If I decide to do it, I gotta order that. And last thing I wanted to show you is more literature books that they can choose from to read individually. These are not gonna be the books we read out loud together. I love these, the Tuttle Twins. We have a bunch of them. They're excellent. Of course, Lord of the Rings, Encyclopedia Brown. It's pretty, pretty fun. Um, Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson, David Livingstone biographies, Lassie, and then I've got a few of these classics, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Charlotte's Web, Three Musketeers, Moby Dick, Robinson Crusoe, The Last of the Mohicans, all great classics. And these are the great illustrated classics that are obviously not the original, but still great character building classic stories. A Boy at War, um, Ben-Hur, and that's about it. Prince and the Popper. <laughs> I have to locate that Shakespeare book and add it to the shelf. And then literally, we are like totally ready for school. I will not have to do a single thing except say, hey, school starts tomorrow and we'll wake up and do school. So this is the Shakespeare, Tales from Shakespeare. Look how short that is. And it has like several stories in here. Let's see, we've read almost the whole thing, but I wanna repeat it. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven Shakespeare stories. And they're all like the happy ones. So there's The Tempest, The Midsummer Night's Dream, Much Ado About Nothing, As You Like It, The Merchant of Venice, Macbeth, Twelfth Night or What You Will, and that's it. So we're actually on, I don't know, we're, half, we're a little bit less than halfway, more than halfway through it. We're on The Merchant of Venice. So we'll probably have to restart that one because we didn't finish it last year. And that is that, you guys. Um, we're also doing nature field trips, nature school, once a month. And we will be joining a co-op with several, not several, a few select families. So I'm not sure what we will do in that co-op, but depending on that, I may or may not add or take away from what I've already got planned for us individually at home. So there's going to be lots of opportunities for learning and growing together this year. I hope this is helpful to you to see how simple homeschool can be. Um, I love good books and good literature. I feel like good, rich literature is the foundation that I laid when my kids were tiny and now they have such an appreciation for poetry and hymns and good rich language they understand it that we can read anything and they can understand it it's just so neat um so yeah that's all i'll share i hope this is encouraging inspiring i would love to hear your thoughts ideas and what you guys are doing this year for school god bless you guys thanks for watching and see you next time